Hi, it's Susan from More Peaceful. And I'm balancing my computer on my leg at the moment, seeking balance. I felt inspired to do this video because I'm having revelations around justice. And inherent within justice, as its fulcrum point, is balance. Now, when I was writing today, I was discussing Lady Justice. Now, Lady Justice is the symbol of the woman holding the scales of, ju of, of justice. Hang on, I was looking for a word there. Holding the scales to find the fairness in decisions. And what I realised as I was writing was that the actual fairness is obviously seeking to balance in order to find that fairness between two competing ideas. Now, when you truly find justice, you actually find peace. And the justice of the peace is what justice is. It is peace. Now, I didn't know that before I went on this journey. I actually didn't know that because it seemed to me that determinations were made on the basis of evidence. Now, that's not to say that one doesn't find evidence in respect of balancing those probabilities or possibilities. This person says this, this person says that. On balance, what is true? See, truth is how we find the balancing point. So in a sense, the words that come to me as all hands must be above the table. In order for justice to occur, one has to be able to discern between competing truths. And even when I say that, I also mean the truth of a lie as well. So those lies must be made visible so that the truth can be seen more clearly and then a determination can be made in order to rebalance those competing um, ideas, if you like. Now, when I was thinking about this, I actually had to close my eyes to feel it because justice is in the feminine. Now, the feminine is not the woman in truth, even though women are depicted as justice. And certainly there's a lot of women that speak up for justice. And I do know that because women are coming from the heart center far more than the intellect, which is where real justice emerges from. You're feeling your way to the truth of a matter. Now, when I closed my eyes, what I saw was the rebalancing brings us to stillness. It means that the truth sits with me. This feels right. Now, from a woman's perspective, now we can, we can turn to the female now, intuition becomes the guiding point. You intuitively feel what's fair here. Now, women often will say, oh, he's not telling the truth or she's not, there's something not right about that. She's accessing this inner feeling. And that's how I was writing today. I was going into inner feeling to probe for the truth of the matter. And I was exploring real justice, what it really is. Now, when you feel for the truth of something, and let's just say you're in the position of, of an arbiter, someone who's going to decide uh, over two competing viewpoints, let's say, then you have to be very tuned in to your own inner truth and sense of fairness. Now, if you're a person who's very fair, you will have a highly developed sense of empathy. 
See, empathy is, is an innate ability to be able to imagine what it's like to be that person. So rather than coming to a situation where you are between two people and coming at that situation from education, you know, from your life experience, from your, uh, in the case of courts, legal background, you actually come from it through an innate ability to feel what it is to be that party and that party. I have a friend who's incredibly fair and I've got the privilege at the moment of sharing a space with her. She's incredibly empathetic. She feels for people. She imagines she actually is very selfless in a lot of ways. But within that selflessness is kind of like a neutrality. So she really weighs up what is it like for them. And I notice these days most people don't do that. They're not actually caring about the other that much. They're too busy or too caught up in all these distractions. Unable to create that stillness to feel for what is fair. Same applies to parenting as well. Very, very important that children grow up observing an adult that's fair. So that fairness is, it's sort of like a stepping back and evaluating something, according that other and equality, that they have the right to this as does the other. So in other words, you're not favouring one over the other, you're coming at the situation in a state of neutrality, which means I have no vested interest in the outcome of this. My only interest is fairness and truth. Now, this is the justice of the peace that I'm exploring right now. And that fairness can only be actioned from within. Sure, you can have lots of evidence, lots of material, but the ultimate arbiter has to come from within. There has to be a feeling for truth. There has to be a space for that type of independence, I think. And I really had major insights today, like it was really powerful. I thought even in my own life, you know, if I've been unbalanced in the sense of I've had a fear or a concern about, you know, it could be about, where I'm going to live, it could be about money, it could be about, you know, where to from here. But what I saw very, very clearly was just focus on balance. Just focus on balancing wherever you go. That's why I've met people who are like this, who can go anywhere and be at peace. It's because they rebalance wherever they go. You know, they don't resist and say, it should be different. I should be here. I should be there. This is with the same philosophy as loving what is, which is Byron Katie's work, which is making peace with where you are. This is the zero point. This is the balancing point. Because I write about zero point in my poetry. And the zero point is only the point of stillness where I'm not having my thoughts racing everywhere. I'm just still. It's like the eye of the storm. It's the place of calm. And of course, in all situations of justice, or fairness, you have to be in a state of stillness. You're allowing the inner wisdom to rebalance the scales. Fairness, of course, is incredibly important because then people will have a belief in that arbiter. 
if they think at any point that there is any distortion in that decision or there is undue influence, then the faith in fairness actually diminishes. The other parties are no longer willing to put themselves before that in order to get a decision. They, will, they won't go there. Sometimes we utilise that type of idea with people we trust. It could be a parent, family member. We discuss the problem and try and get some sort of reflection back on it. But the only thing that will bring you peace is when you come to a point of fairness within yourself. Always at the end of the day, it comes down to how you sit with yourself. If you don't care about what other people think, which is a very good thing, it means that you're not allowing your own internal balance to tip one way or the other. You're coming from within your own self because that's where your wisdom is. No one can tell you your wisdom. In truth, if you're still, no one knows better. Now, for those of you who have watched my videos, you've seen me go still. I just want to make a point. I don't channel. I'm not channeling. Some people think I am. I'm actually going to inner truth is where I go. When you see me pause like that, that's what I'm actually doing. I'm going to a still point. It's not necessarily about filling the gaps when we speak. The voice and the words are really just channels for communication, to share ideas for the benefit of others. I'm not speaking so that you look at me. I don't care. My purpose with videos is actually in service to the other because I'm feeling inspired to share something that I've gained an insight from. This insight does not belong to me. It's not my, I don't own it. I simply share it. That's why I write poetry and I share it. I do it because I'm seeking to really just benefit another. I might just feel inspired to send. Um, there's no agenda around it. It's just coming from love, actually. <laughs> And that's how I'm living my life these days. It's like it may be hard for people to understand it if they're in busy lives and they're working nine to five. They don't have the space for this. But I do have the space for this. And so someone has to do it. I'm very happy to share what I get inspired to share. And I don't mind if people hear it or not. I just feel to do it. And I guess those who do watch my videos are meant to watch them. I see life in that prism. So what does that mean from the perspective of justice? It means that the universe has its own order that you and I can't control. And we can't know what the next moment brings. We can try and you know, predict things, but ultimately things happen. So when I choose to produce a video, I just get inspired, this feeling of inspiration actually that happens because I see myself as one with everyone I don't have any enemies there is no one I dislike I see the things that people do and I may see that that's not a wise thing that they do I can see that they are believing what they're believing but if I fall into judgment as a negative projection then I'm not able to see them. In a sense, it's kind of like just looking at the facts of what is happening, but not associating the people with the facts. I guess that's why we've got to be very careful with labels. You know, we can label and tarnish. Nobody is ever what they're labeled to be, ever, not even their job. People are far, far greater than how the world might determine them. They're just moving through the world on the basis of what they know, 
doing the best they can given, you know, the circumstances, their education, their background, personality and so forth. But in my worldview, people are far greater than they know. They just don't know it yet, you know, until you free yourself and get time alone and, you know, really reflect on who you are and what you're about and what it is you truly want. You know, these moments of aloneness are actually very important for this stillness, for the balancing, the rebalancing. I spend a lot of time on my own and I'm not lonely in that because I'm actually enjoying a very rich spiritual life which frees me to really explore the truth of life, which is what is my interest. And I don't for one minute say that my truth is the ultimate truth, not at all. Um, I guess truths can change as we evolve as people. That's why you can never hold someone to say, well, you know, 10 years ago you said this, well, people change. They literally change from moment to moment. Because as we get more information, we're able to see more. And that's how we become more just. The more experiences you have in life, you go, oh, I've been there, I know what that's like. And rather than saying, to, saying something negative about that other for whatever they've done, you go, I've been there. That is the balancing point. I am you. I know what that was like. And what it does is it actually evokes within the person a sense of compassion. Compassion is another rebalancing point. Truth, compassion, you know, I'm hearing Falun Gong here. Forbearance, they talk about that. Various uh, religious or spiritual groupings, the, the Buddhists, they talk about meditation and that's their way of finding balance, inner balance. Various philosophies will create that too. You know, I am my, others, my brother's keeper is a Christian type theology. Um, Love thy neighbour is another that we've brought up with in this country and various others. Don't judge is another one. These are all rebalancing points to enable justice. The virtues of humanity are the rebalancing points back to homeostasis, which is still point which is peace that's why i speak of values um, my whole life is dedicated to values and you know seeking to integrate and embed them in my own life because what they do is they lead you to peace so my real hope program obviously is responsibility that leads you to peace how is that you rebalance you take the responsibility if i make a mess i clean it up that's rebalancing. Empathy, I stand in another's shoes. I become one with that other. That's rebalancing. That's still point. That's justice. Awareness means I'm opening my mind and my heart because you can never open your mind unless your heart is open. And that's a truism. So when you open your mind, you become aware. There's more to this than meets the eye. Awareness would also bring to your consciousness, what am I learning from this? So what I'm doing is I'm actually expanding upon that thing and seeing it's much more than it seems, which is an abundance of sorts. This is the richness. See, when you become more open, you're actually attracting more richness because you're expanding beyond limited thoughts. So that's awareness. Love, of course, is the ultimate um, justice, of course. It's not possible to really um, remain in imbalance very long if you've got a feeling of love within. That's why many have said love, love thy enemy, love thy neighbour, um, forgive. Forgiveness is actually for yourself. It's not actually for the other. You're letting go of um, resistances that hold a person in place. And of course, that person is not all those things. People are many things. So again, for forgiveness is actually a very important rebalancer, is to let go of the negative image one is holding. So that I was speaking of love. 
for me, love, I, I want to kind of dwell on that a bit longer because it's something that's quite instrumental in my own life. I often have feelings of love and it's a form of unity consciousness is what it is. That's why I speak of universal love. It means that nothing is unacceptable in the universe. Everything is created for a purpose. And who am I to say something should or shouldn't exist? Who am I to say, you know, this is right and this is wrong? What do I know? The only thing I do know is when it feels good, when I feel loving, um, when I feel forgiving, when I'm accepting, I come back to my own inner still point, which is fairness, which is justice. So that was love. So that's real. Um, responsibility, empathy, awareness, love. Then we've got honesty, oneness, peace and enjoyment. That's the other part. So honesty, of course, is truth. Gandhi spoke of that. He actually spoke of love and truth. He spoke of it as in holding on to truth, which was um, satyagraha and ahimsa, which is nonviolent love. Because all love is nonviolent, of course. You can't harm another when you love them. And it has to be an unconditional love if it's to rebalance as justice. If that love has a lot of conditions hanging off it, that you should turn up in a certain way, that um, no, that person's not worthy of being loved, say they're on the street and you walk past them and you think that they're worthless, they're not. It's something within you that's worthless projecting onto them because you're probably afraid of, you know, if you were on the street and how people might see you. We can all end up there if we have war. We all end up in chaos. We'll suddenly have empathy for the Syrians <laughs> and the Iraqis and all the others who have been in conflict, like in Africa and what have you. See, that becomes the rebalancing point, compassion. But often, I have to say, it does come from experience when you've, had the experience you're more likely to identify. I have noticed that people who have not had your experience just can't understand and I have plenty of space for that. You know, I have plenty of, um, what would be the word, understanding for those differences. I don't mind. I get it. I mean, how many times in my life have I not understood someone because I haven't walked in their shoes? I don't know. And I may have made a judgment and was wrong. <laughs> That's okay. Happens to all of us. So I spoke of honesty, and of course Gandhi, you know, he made he called truth love, um, and he also called it God. He saw the higher intelligence as one with these virtues, which is balance, homeostasis, if we want to put it into nature's terms. So he really went to quite a lot of degrees um, of discipline to ensure he was in alignment with his own truth. And he faced a lot of ridicule as a result of not agreeing with others or not doing what they wanted. You know, he often went off on his own and then others followed. He was a leader by example. He was highly principled. He believed he failed at the end of his life, but he didn't, in actual fact. He... Um, he showed a way out of madness, as was said in his film, made by David Richard Attenborough, actually David's brother. I actually had an experience when I came back from my world trip where I was on a tram. I still remember exactly where I was, and I actually felt the truth is alive. That's your God, you see. That's the higher intelligence. So I was right. It is alive. That's why I encourage people to speak the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth, to the best of their ability. Obviously, we're in perceptual realities and we don't always remember things exactly as they are. It's always embellished with our perception. But it's the intention for truth is what I'm really talking about. It's not saying that my truth is better than yours. How would I know? It's the intention for truth that makes all the difference. And it will lead you down pathways to your surprise when you stand, you know, you may have to stand alone in that truth, but I would encourage you to do it. 
never align with things that do not reflect who you truly are. They're not in your highest interests. So the next part of real hope is oneness, and that, of course, is the justice. When one finds the still point for balancing fairness with one side to the other, with no favouritism, no bias. When one looks at all as one, they are me, I am you, without any of the class, status, privileges hanging off that perception, that's when you start to experience oneness with all things. I'm still working on that and I still, you know, I've still obviously had an education and, you know, been influenced by various prejudices. But at least at this point in my life I'm aware of it and that's a good thing. That means I'm becoming conscious of the unconscious biases that we all live with. And once you become conscious it actually dissipates because you can see it. So oneness is we are one with all of it. Nothing is more superior or inferior to anything. We are truly one. And it's not hard to figure that out if you look at it, you know, even you think of someone, they ring you, you you've been thinking about them all week, suddenly they walk around a corner, there they are. How did they how did that happen? What created that event? Some people say, oh no, it was coincidence, they walked around the corner. Well, is it? If energetically we're all connected, electromagnetically we certainly are, you know, that suggests something beyond that independent self. Yeah, oneness is an incredibly wonderful concept. Um, now I hesitate on the word concept, it's actually a reality. It's just that we're putting it into concepts when we try and talk about it. So let's look at peace, another one of my favourites I've dedicated my life to now. And, of course, justice is peace. I really see that. When I wrote my poetry um, on justice of the peace, I came to understand that, oh, it's the one thing. We feel justice has occurred when we're at peace, but it's not because we get what we want. It's because things have rebalanced. You know, people might fight for years for a just outcome. Finally, they feel peace, but wouldn't it be lovely if we could feel peace before the just outcome? <laughs> I tend to think that that's, in a sense, connecting with the justice of life, which is things work out as they're meant to. And we don't know what's going on around those things. And it's not really about winning the argument. It's about simply learning to speak your own truth. That's what I believe life's about. And situations arise in order for that to occur. It's for you to hear your own truth. That's the critical part. You don't have to win to win. It depends on what you believe is winning. See, I don't see winning in terms of making money or, you know, beating someone. I see the winning as remaining at peace if I can in a situation that's difficult. I see the winning in staying true to what I love, you know, but I prefer the, I like the thought of the win-win. I like everyone to win, you know. In one way or another, they come out of it wiser or, you know, they've been on a journey and that's a great thing. You know, we're here on journeys, all of us. And maybe at the end of our lives, we come to a point where we realise that these things all needed to happen in order to arrive where we arrived. So wouldn't it be nice to think that every single person along that way was actually in a service of you on your journey, whether they knew it or not? That's a beautiful thought and that's my inner feeling is, you know, I'm just feeling to say that there's a justice in that. If you understand from a broader perspective what the meaning and purpose of life really is. All things are serving us and this is not necessarily coming from it's coming from my wisdom now but I actually have learnt that from very wise teachers in the past and these people you know were wise because we feel peace around those words it's a still point it's a justice and so beyond peace I have enjoyment which is the clowning side of my life <laughs> which I hope to resurrect someday <laughs> soon <laughs> that to me was the 
penultimate, what you call it, penultimate experience, joy. If it doesn't bring joy, don't do it. Although sometimes you have to go through hardship in order to arrive that you still enjoy, you know. But really the mastery, I think, in life is um, you kind of know when you've really made it is when you're actually really happy. You know, happiness is another signal that you're in harmony with your own self. You know, when you're jumping for joy and you're getting excited, this is not for kids, this is for everybody. That's when you know you're actually in alignment with what is truly true for you. That's why these things all merge into each other, truth, love, peace, joy. They're all the one thing in actual fact. They just express in interesting ways. It's like colours to a, a painting. It's like palettes, a palette. And all these emotions and feelings we have are like all the colours that we're configuring in order to paint the picture. Now, we can paint a dark picture or we can paint a rosy picture. Always the choice is ours. We're always the creator of our reality. Nobody is doing it to you or for you. You're the one who ultimately decides if it's a beautiful day or if it's not. Even if it's raining, it's a beautiful day. Isn't it lovely? There's water in the water tanks. The, the plants and the animals are all extremely happy because they're getting water. They're getting clean. Some might see it as, oh, it's a terrible dark day depresses me well no you depress you because you believe that the weather has that sort of impact on your happiness a lot of the work in peace is recognizing that we are all co-creators in this drama and we're all deciding what part we play you know and we learn from the parts we play but at the end of the day i believe the purpose of this drama is to actually arrive at peace and sense of oneness and joy you know the last part of my real hopes framework is service which is again why I'm doing the video it's not about me um, it's about sharing I've spent my life sharing and it's not need it doesn't need reciprocation you know I give because I love to give it's one of my highest joys when I ran around as a clown, there was nothing more fulfilling to me in life than going around and hugging people with no agenda. I cannot even convey to you the beauty of hugging everyone and feeling completely fearless. You know, you're walking up to people and you just see this incredible beauty in their eyes. It doesn't matter what they look like. And that incredible beauty in their lives, eyes is the child that you're seeing that's coming alive in the moment before you because they see a clown. <laughs> they're not looking at you. They're looking at the clown, you see. This is a symbol of which I have projected, you know. But what is me is the love that I project to them and then they project love back and that's how we meet. I don't need to judge them to know them. You know, I connect in this way and I think that everything kind of like disappears because we are one in that moment of mutual connection, you know. That's what the clowning has done. And you might find it in your own life. You've met people, you got to know them, and there's a great joy that generates between you. But wouldn't it be lovely if you could do that without agreeing? Let's say you meet someone who's from the opposite political party and you're able to really see the human being. And that might be hard because you want to see them as the enemy. But imagine if you can drop all those beliefs that divide you from others and say, okay, well, that's their perspective. That's the role they've got to play in this life. And maybe that's the best for them. Who am I to say they should think like me? You know, from my perspective as a peacemaker, I could talk, talk about a soldier for example this is a good one because a lot of peacemakers are obviously going oh war's bad now if I come at it from a judicial fairness still point basis and actually I might just go still for a second before I speak this one let's see what I feel
<laughs> I have to laugh at this. <laughs> Interestingly enough, and I'm not obviously an advocate for violence at all, I'm not, but let's look at outcomes. The Universal Declaration of Human Rights was what just came to me then and I laughed. <laughs> came out of the Second World War, carnage, came out of, you know, more than 50 million people murdered, you know, for the sake of what they called freedom, which I laugh at that too because, you know, you're not really freeing yourself when you hurt others. You're actually imprisoning yourself. Isn't that interesting? And that's the concept of the jail. The jail is not really the physical jail. The jail is yourself. When you harm another, you, you actually imprison yourself because you don't feel good about that. You know, you feel guilt. And we might do mind games too. I'm, I'm actually not um, diverting from the subject. This is actually the subject. The guilt uh, is another means of turning on oneself, feeling bad about something that's happened. So I'm just getting a sense around that. A lot of people carry guilt for things they've done they wish they hadn't. But all that guilt does is weigh you down. It becomes your prison because you're fighting within your own self. What's really true about that is you've gone against what was true for you. That's why the guilt is there. But it's not to punish yourself over that. It's to just recognise that, yes, you're having that feeling you've moved against your own truth. Um, it's never about the other. So to drop that guilt is to forgive yourself, your error. It's just an error. You're human. It's okay. <laughs> All is good. Now, how does this connect to war? That was the war within that I was reflecting. We're all soldiers and we're all peacemakers. <laughs> we're all fighting our little battles, you know. So can I divide the world like this? No, I can't. I'm seeing the outward projection of wars we're all fighting manifesting in the armies of the world. So they're not my enemy, they are simply just a manifestation of what is unresolved within humanity. There's obviously control inherent within armies because they have hierarchical regimes, they have discipline, obedience, and they see that as an imperative in order to keep that group together in order to be an effective fighting force. They will have mantras that they're fighting for peace, and this is what I find really interesting. And I have had some revelations around that as well. What I've seen is, to my amazement, is that they actually want the same thing as I do. But what I've come in to understand and understand is, and for those soldiers listening to this, please forgive me if you feel this is a critique, what I've come to understand is it's the distorted belief system looking out upon the world, fearfully scanning for enemies in order to feel safe, to feel peace for a greater good. And I get that. When I was talking about justice at the very beginning, it's about getting neutral. It's about getting clear it's about dropping prejudices. It's about dropping divisions and biases which make us lean one way or the other. My side is right, your side is wrong. I am the greater good, you are the evil. You can see the imbalance within that. That's why we as peacemakers would love to get you together with the other side so that you can actually learn to rebalance you will find that they're a lot like you because they're doing exactly what you're doing. They're fighting what they see as the enemy for peace because they feel afraid too. But being men, you don't want to admit that you're afraid because you see it as a weakness. And, that, and then that translates into a vulnerability. You feel even more insecure that you could be exposed. 
I get that, but it's not true. It's not true. It's a lie you've told yourselves. That's the distortion in the belief system that projects negatively onto the world. It's out of balance. Remember I went back to justice is the zero point, the still point that's at peace. That's how you know you're in a just situation. You can never, ever, ever have a just war. It doesn't exist. Because war is imbalance. But it can be, in a sense, a tool. And again, I'm not in support of war, but I'm just going through the idea of rebalancing. Sometimes, well, the life force is what rebalances in actual fact. So let's just say a war takes place and people's lives are disrupted, people are murdered, it's havoc, chaos, lawlessness, brutality, all these things are happening within this, this space of, you know, where all the values and the social constructs are swept aside in a sense. What follows that war is the rebalancing. People learn from the war. That's why I brought up the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. The massive abuses of human rights is what came out of the Second World War. You know, it was um, it was Franklin De Delano Roosevelt, Roosevelt's wife, Eleanor Roosevelt, who was part of that team who developed the Declaration of Human Rights. The rights of man comes up in my mind. You know, the the various, the Magna Carta is there. So the nature naturally rebalances anyway. So whatever polar position you're taking, in the moment you take your polar position, now this is a real essence of truth here, your opposite arises. Now, I take the position of a peacemaker. Someone out there is going to take the position of opposing the peacemaker. <laughs> and I can't say they shouldn't be there. Of course they should. We're in, a, we're in a world of opposites. So just remember when you take a very strong stance and you have no tolerance for that other, you create the other. They're your creation. Isn't that interesting? And that's the oneness. You are the creator of that opposite. That's why um, just the word terrorism just came to me then. Okay, so we're focusing on terrorism all the time, going there's evil people out there doing horrible things. Well, we don't know who they are. We've never met them. Why are they doing what they're doing? Well, we haven't really explored that, have we? <laughs> what is it created the conditions for the person to believe to follow a group of people and inflict violence? Now, there's lots of names. We say terrorism, militias, freedom fighters. We've had labels for years depending on who we believe. <laughs> If I agree with you, you're a freedom fighter. If I hate you, you're a terrorist. They're creating terror. Well, who doesn't? I mean, a lot of people create terror whenever they're unkind or cruel or physically um, violent. So it's inherent within every human being. Yet again, we come back to the truth. There's your outer projection. What is it within the world that is in terror? What is the world afraid of? What programs are you watching on TV? What games are you playing? You know, <laughs> the one consciousness is active in creating the very things that it's afraid of. So what I've just come full circle with here is starting at the point of an inspiration around justice and fairness and equality being, in a sense, the balancing points that bring the opposites back to centre. I've talked about stillness, which is just simply being still. No thoughts of this or that, right or wrong, anger, love, you're just still. There's a neutrality in it. I've seen this as the balancing point of the scales of justice. I've seen though the judges themselves need to become very, very in alignment with their own sense of fairness based on experience, empathy, you know, inner truth is what creates 
the justice. And this message is really for everyone. Those who are engaging in activities globally at this time to seek to control the masses. You can keep going. I don't mind. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> You're actually creating democracy. <laughs> and that's the cosmic joke. That's why I'm a clown. <laughs> I see that. Absolutely. So bring it on. It's okay. Surveil away. Um, create your files. Check them out because they could be a problem later on. As you come from that mindset, you're actually creating the opposite. So that really returns me to the thought that fear is false evidence appearing real. There is nothing to fear but fear itself. And whatever you fear, you create. So if you want something to no longer exist in truth, you have to no longer fear it. You will then unify with it, which is the embracing of the shadow. All psychologists understand this. So you embrace the aspect of yourself that you've rejected. This becomes the unity that brings peace. That is truly um, a reflection of the depth of peace. And when you truly feel it, your unlimited, oh, actually the word that came to me was, um, oh, <laughs> my friend said it to me last night and I say it to people all the time, <laughs> your happy destiny <laughs> is unavoidable. That is the clown. <laughs> so, wow, that's wonderful. I really enjoyed that experience. See what I brought to myself by sharing with you. So as you share, you receive. <laughs> You take care. I'm sending enormous love and peace and joy and predominantly justice. May you be the change you wish to see in the world. Thanks. Bye.